now that we have our jaw completed, it works properly, the um, jaw plates are there, uh, we now have to worry about our screw and the thread for the screw. So we're going to cut a thread into this, and if I go to my finished one, you can see there's an actual shape of a screw cut into there. And there's also one cut into here. You can kind of see if we look in there, you can see that shape. So we're going to make that now. Now, there's a number of types of threads we have we can choose from. Here's just five different types, but there's a lot more than this. Um, if we're doing our standard bolt, like something you would buy at Home Depot or something, you would usually get a unified thread type, just a general use type. If we are using the metric system, uh, we'd use a metric type. They're very, very similar. They're, they're almost identical. Um, if we wanted really, really good power transmission, so really accurate uh, forces going through the thread, we could use a square type. But a square type is very, very difficult to make. It's a very difficult thread to actually manufacture. So oftentimes, we can also use an Acme thread. Uh, it's stronger than a square thread. Uh, it's not as accurate. But it's incredible. It's a lot easier to make than a square type. And if we want to handle a heavy force in only one direction, like in this case, they give a truck jack, we could use a buttress thread. Uh, we're going to use an Acme thread, though, because it's a fairly strong thread, so it's good for our vice. But it also allows us to to manufacture it a little bit easier. So if I look at Wikipedia. There's a whole bunch of information on what's also known as a trapezoidal thread form. Uh, it's the same thing as an Acme thread. And there's a few things I care about here, um, mainly this picture. So well, this picture shows me what we're doing with the thread. So if this is one of the teeth of the thread, um, from one tooth to another one, it's 29 degrees. From the center point of it, to the next center point, that dimension is what's called p, and I'll talk about that in a second, and then the height of it is p divided by 2. Now, p is called pitch, and pitch is the distance between one thread to another one, and this is standardized. So if I look at this chart here, nominal diameter is the diameter of um, our, our screw. So for instance, our screw is a 5 8 diameter um, screw. So we would look at nominal diameter for 5 8 and we'd see our pitch is 1 8 of an inch. So from here to here would be 1 8 of an inch. From here to here would be half of 1 8 of an inch. So we are going to need those measurements so that we can make our thread. So going back to Inventor, I need to draw one of those threads, and then I can spin it around, cutting away at our screw. So I'm going to open up my screw by right clicking on it, clicking open. I could double click on it, but for the amount of work we need to do, I just want to open it here. And we're going to just work on that same sketch we worked on before to do our retaining ring cutout. So up here in my browser, I have sketch one. I'm going to double click on it so I can edit it. We're going to draw the thread here, and then we're going to make it go down the whole, the whole length using a coil tool. So we need to choose if we're going to draw our thread up here, so such as this. If we're going to do this type of thread and have that go, or if we're going to have it go like this, and we're going to cut it away. And it depends on what we're making. Uh, usually, if you're using like a wood screw or something, it's going to be on the outside of your shaft, of the main part of it. It's a little bit easier to make that. It's actually a lot easier to make that. Um, and it's a lot cheaper and everything, but it's not going to be as strong. Whereas if I cut it out of my main shaft, such as that second type, that's going to be a lot stronger to have, to make. So we're going to draw an internal thread. Um, cutting it away makes it a lot stronger. It's a little bit more work, but for something like a vise that has a lot of power transmission going through it, it'll be just the better thing to do. So I'm going to draw a trapezoid coming down here. I'm going to zoom in to make sure I'm on the blue line. It doesn't really matter where we start because we're going to mention it. 
And I don't want it to be 90 degrees. I want it to be angled coming down. Then I want it to be a flat line and then come back up to be angled again. Now, there's a couple things I can put in right away. Um, for instance, I know these lines have to be the same distance, so I'm going to make those two lines equal to each other. And this way, this line can move and they can get longer, but they'll always stay the same length. I also know that from here to here is 29 degrees, so I'm going to click on dimension, click on one of those lines, go to the other one, and then I can put in an angle. So I'm going to just click, type in 29 degrees, and there we go. I'm now always going to be 29 degrees. So I could still make it bigger, but, but I can't make it, or these lines will always stay 29 degrees to each other. And now we're going to start dealing with our pitch. So if we look at this again, we see that from the center of it over is our pitch. And that's from the center point of that. So we're going to have to make this kind of dotted imaginary line in Inventor to dimension to. To do that, I'm going to just draw a regular line. And I'm going to go from the center point of it, so that green dot, straight across to the center again. But I don't want this line to be an actual line here. I don't want to be able to um, like extrude it or anything. So I'm going to click on this line. And up here, above where we can turn something into a center line, I'm going to click on construction line. A uh, construction line isn't an object line. I, it's not like one of these regular lines. I cannot extrude it. So it doesn't let me actually pick anything to extrude if I tried. Um, its only purpose is to help me make things to the right size, essentially. So I can fully dimension this, but I can't actually extrude it, or I can't revolve it, or coil it, or anything. So it's just a reference, essentially. It just helps us along. So we see that from one side of it to the next one is our pitch, which then we could infer from one side of a tooth to another side of a tooth is half of our pitch. And so we essentially can make this line half of our pitch. So I can go on dimension. And the pitch for this was 1 eighth of an inch. So I can do 0.125, which is 1 eighth, divided by 2. And that would give me how long that is. We also know that the height of it is also our pitch divided by 2. So I can go from that top line down 0.125 divided by 2. And so far, we have our tooth design then. But I can still move it around. I can still make it go back and forth. We're going to start our tooth half of our pitch away from the beginning of our shaft. So I'm going to go to dimension. And I'm going to go from our pitch line here that we drew from here to this vertical line and also do 0.125 divided by 2 so that it starts at an appropriate distance away. Now once I have that, I can go ahead and coil or and copy that down here and cut it away. So I'm going to finish sketch. I'm going to go here where it says sweep, click the little drop down and click on coil. And first thing I need to do is I need to select my profile. What do I want to coil? Well, I want to zoom in on this tooth and select that tooth. Then I need to select my axis. So I'm going to click on that and click on that center line we had from before. You can see it wants to go backwards. So I'm going to then just click this button to make it go the other way, to make it go the way we want it to go. Also, this cuts away. It doesn't add material. So just like you do in extrude, I'm going to cut. And I'll have it cut away from the material. Now, only, it's only going to here now. We don't want to go there. We want it to keep going. So I'm going to go here to coil size. And we can select a couple different types. We can select the pitch. So this pitch here, which we definitely want. Um, we can select the height and how many revolutions we want. And we can always pick two of these three. We're not going to really worry about taper. So we're going to do pitch and height, because I don't know how many revolutions it is. Pitch was 0.125. And height was the distance from one end to the other, more or less. 
um, which was about five inches long. And then the rest of this goes through our um, our jaw. So I click OK. And there we go. It cuts it away. And we can see we have a perfect profile of the thread cut away throughout the entire object. Now I'm going to just right click on this sketch in my browser then and uncheck visibility. I don't want to see it anymore. And I'm going to go and save and close out my screw. And we can see now it updates it. And it stopped at the perfectly right place um, right at the beginning of our jaw. All right, now that we have our screw done for, or the thread done for our screw, we can add that thread to our base. So let's open up our base by right-clicking on it, clicking open to edit it. And sorry, I'm in the wrong thing right now. All right, so now I'm in the right assembly. I'm going to right-click on my base, open it, and we need to add a thread through this hole. So I need to cut, I need to make a sketch down the middle of this, and if you remember earlier, we did a work plane down the middle so that we can mirror our feet. So I'm going to just right-click on that work plane and check visibility to see it again, and create a sketch on it so that I can draw down the middle of it. So let's slice our graphics so we can see what's going on. And I'm then going to project the geometry of these four lines kind of surrounding this hole so that now I can dimension them and see them and everything. So to make our thread, we're going to, instead of cutting away like last time, we're going to add material because it's an internal hole and you usually add from there. And to do that, I don't want to start inside the hole. I actually want to start outside the hole and cut away through it so that it adds the material properly. So to do that, I'm going to draw a line from this upper point just straight out. I'm going to just make it 0.125, the pitch of the screw. Then I'm going to draw from there the trapezoidal shape of our thread and start dimensioning that just like we did before. So we have these two lines are equal to each other. I have an angle of 29 degrees between these two. The distance from the bottom to the top was half our pitch, or 0.125 divided by 2. And then I need to make that middle line and make it a construction line and dimension that as 0.15 divided by 2 as well. And there's our thread then. Then I need to make a line going down the middle of our part. as our center line. So I'm going to select that and select center line. And that's what the coil is going to spin around. So now that I have that, I can finish my sketch, click on coil, zoom in, and select that thread profile to spin around, and then select the center line to spin it around as well. Now I need to change my coil size. So we want to change our pitch and height. And our pitch should be 0.125. And our height can be 1.5. It doesn't really matter because we're going to cut things away afterwards. So we'll just leave that 1.5, click OK, and there's our thread. I'm going to get rid of this work plane and uncheck it, uncheck the visibility. And you can see it has a thread, but it also has it sticking out the sides. And it kind of looks cool. Um, so we need to cut that away. Easiest way to do it is I'm going to start a sketch on this back surface. And I'm going to just draw a circle, really anywhere, as long as it envelops that whole thread. And then I'm going to select that circle and for, with extrude, click cut, and change my dimension back to, or direction to direction 1. Click OK, and it just cut it off. So there's now no thread there. And you can see it kind of seamlessly, the thread seamlessly starts into the surface by doing that. So on this side as well, so I'm going to create a sketch on this surface and draw a circle, extrude it, select cut, change, select cut, change my direction, make sure my direction is cutting away, click OK, and again, there's my thread. 
so this part's done. So we can just save it, X out, and there's our thread. So if I were to push this, we could, actually if we look in closely, we can see the thread in there, and now both of these have a thread. So let's check our mass. And we should be at 17.877 pounds now. And if we're there, we are good. So let's save it, click OK, and we are good on this step now.